Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the History Lessons with Academy Bullets, Bullets Academy. Today, we're going to actually go back in time. We've been creeping forward, get a little bit earlier, get closer to our where we are now in some really recent history. Now, we're going to go back to some of you. This is ancient history because this is going all the way back to 2002. And, uh, yeah, I know some of you guys weren't even born yet, but that's okay. Um, 2002, U.S. National Championships, the Phillips 66 Nationals in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And the race we're going to talk about today was probably the, my second favorite race of the meet, but it was also one of the most amazing races I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the reason I say it's the second favorite race of the meet, because that's also the meet where Mayor DeSenza, swimming for Academy Bullets, um, made the world championship team, winning the U.S. national title, and um, she was... Uh, uh, the first Illinois swimmer in decades to win a, a national title and uh, first Illinois high school swimmer to win a national title. And the fact that uh, I was there with her and uh, we were both representing the Bullets was just amazing. So, um, and when I say representing Bullets, I was coaching that swimming. Duh. But um, so to have that event there and then, uh, but the race of the meet was the 400 IM and uh, Michael Phelps versus Eric Vett. Uh, everybody knows who Michael Phelps is, but if you don't know Eric Vett, Eric Vett was an amazing distance freestyler and, um, uh, and, and 400 IMR. And two, he was a great 200 IMR. So IMR and freestyler. Um, he's a three-time Olympian, gold medalist in the 800 free relay. Um, and uh, like I said, he swam in three different Olympics. He's a three-time Olympic medalist. And one of the toughest racers you've ever seen. He's not very tall. And um, so it's him and Phelps. And um, a couple of interesting things about that race. And again, being on the deck, that was the buzz of the meet. This race is what everybody was talking about all week long. And this is the race that everybody wanted to see. And so you have a packed stands. It's an outdoor meet, southern Florida, you know, Fort Lauderdale. Beautiful night. And... Um, uh, it was August, so it, when I say beautiful night, it was, it was pretty hot and muggy, actually. But, uh, but the evening's cooled off a little bit. And so, so you got Phelps and Vent. And uh, what's interesting about the meet was that people that had been following Phelps, and every, of course everybody follows Phelps, but when Michael Phelps walked onto the deck, one of the most amazing things that you saw was that his thighs had gotten so much bigger. They were much bigger. And... Phelps knew that if he was going to beat Vent, if he was going to get the world record in the 49, he had to improve his breaststroke. So he really worked hard on improving his legs and, and being a, uh, just so he could be a better breaststroker. Another interesting thing about that race was um, that you have two guys, and pretty much everybody in the building knew that these two guys had a chance to go. I mean, but I think everybody in the building, you know, we all hoped that they would go into the roller arcade, but I think everybody knew that there was a shot that they could actually do it, even though Vent's best time was two seconds off the world record. And at that level, that's kind of hard to drop two seconds in an event. Um, but, but Phelps did a couple of things, and one I'll tell you later in the race, but, but the one thing was really building up his thighs so that, because his problem was he would get a big lead and then Vent would reel him in. And so... What he needed to do was be able to stay ahead of Vent going into the freestyling. The other interesting thing about the race was who was in the stands. Tom Dolan uh, was in the stands, and Tom Dolan was the world record holder at the time. So that interesting dynamic that you have the world record hand holder sitting in the stands watching this phenomenal race. So, um, so you got the two fastest swimmers in the middle of the pool, and it and so right off the bat, you know, everybody dives in. Michael Phelps is a great butterfly. Everybody knows that, and he just smokes the field. The world record in the 400 IM, the, the world record pace for the 100 butterfly was 58.02. Phelps goes out in 55.9. He is a mile ahead of the world record, and he's a mile ahead of everybody else. Eric Bent is 58.5, so he's within a half a second of world record pace. Now, world record pace in the IM is a little bit different than freestyle events, because in freestyle, you're swimming the same stroke all the way through, and you're, you're a freestyler, you're not, okay? So, but in the IM, you know, the world record, you know, Dolan was not a great butterfly, so he was better at the back and breast. So, you'll see that the world's record splits, you know, like Phelps is way out front, then it gets a little bit tighter and tighter. So, um, so anyway, Phelps has a commanding lead. And when you watch this video, the interesting thing, you're going to be thinking to yourself, knowing the, the legacy of Phelps, is like, oh, man, this race isn't going to be exciting. Oh, wait. 
So then we get to the backstroke leg. The world record split is 201.1. Michael Phelps, 159.3. is just a little bit less than two full seconds off the, off the record. Vent holds kind of even with, with Phelps at that point, but um, uh, he uh, does lose a little bit more. He's 202.5. Phelps is 159.3. So you're looking at about a three-second gap between the two. And, um, but you're thinking, I mean, three seconds is an hour in swimming. When we get to the breaststroke leg, Vent is a breaststroker. Phelps is a much improved breaststroker. Vent splits a 110, 100-meter breaststroker after swimming world-class 100 climb back. Phelps splits a 113. They turn at 312.9. The world record split is a 313 flat, so they are both just barely under the world record. And so what was a blowout, and you imagine watching this breaststroke, and you just see this, every stroke, it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And then they both turn, and they turn together at the breaststroke. Again, we have a full grandstand. People are going crazy. Those of us on the deck, every coach, every swimmer, Every human, everybody who's entered in that meet is on deck. It is packed, and we are all fans of swimming right now. We are just out there watching a great race. And um, I wouldn't even venture to say that necessarily. I'm sure some people had favorites, but I think for a lot of us that, you know, knew these are two tough, tough competitors and two great guys that, you know, I don't think, you know, I can speak at first. I, to, I would have been happy no matter who won because it was just a great race. So now Vent is a freestyle. Obviously, we know Michael Phelps is a freestyle or two. Michael Phelps takes a few dolphin kicks. They both pop up. They're, they're dead even. Phelps gets a little bit of a lead. You know, takes his three, four dolphin kicks, whatever. Gets a little bit of a lead. But, but Eric Vent is like a bulldog. And he is just right on him, right on him, right on him. Vent flips slightly ahead of Phelps going into the last turn. 50 meters to go. They both push off the wall. And I told you that there were a couple of things that Phelps did. Different. This is the second big surprise. Vent pushes off the wall. Phelps pushes off the wall. Vent pops up right at the flags like he normally does. And Phelps doesn't. Where's Michael Phelps? Michael Phelps pushed off deeper, and he cranked out those dolphin kicks. Instead of doing three to four dolphin kicks like he normally does, the six or seven, he comes up about 10, 12 meters out. And he has a nearly, a, he has like a half a body length lead. And so Michael Phelps went deep at the end of a 400 IM, snapped out a bunch of dolphin kicks, and, and created some space between him and Vent. And um, that was, and that ultimately turned out to be the difference in the race. Um, Vent comes storming back, though, because, again, he, this guy is a racer, two great competitors. And um, it, let, me, let me back up a little bit, because that underwater dolphin kick kind of gasped the whole crowd. Because really, like, when he popped up at half, I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about it. When he popped up a half a body in the head, it was like nobody had seen that before. Nobody had ever done that. Like nobody had ever gone like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to save my dolphin kicks to the last 50. I'm just going to gut it out. And he popped up and you're just like, it, it, you're just, oh man, it was nuts. So now they're crazy, but but that keeps coming up. He keeps getting in and getting him. And at one point, it looks like Vellet is even a little bit ahead of him. You're looking their heads. But Phelps has the wingspan. He's got the longer arms. And what's really cool, watch the last few stroke sequences. They are outer hands and inner hands. Outer hands and so they are, but their their stroke rate is identical, at all, you know, like virtually identical. And they are stroke for stroke. You want to talk about eyeball to eyeball racing, going stroke for stroke in the wall. This is what they're talking about. Amazing finish. And you watch that last stroke. Phelps literally wins the race because his arms are a little bit longer. And the world record is a 411.7. And they both go, uh, Phelps goes a 411.09. Vent 411.27. They would both go on to go 1-2 go at the world championships later. And so um, just a phenomenal race. Unbelievable. Just uh, nuts. You've got to go back and watch this race. We'll put the link down below um, for you guys to take a look at it. But, uh, man, just this one of those races that, you know, that, that I, I'm so thrilled. I've, I've seen a handful of world record swims in, in real life. But to see that race and, and, again, know that Tom Dolan's sitting up in the stands and, you know, to, to witness a race like that was just spectacular. And, I mean, it's been an amazing meet. The outdoor venue, so pretty cool that way too. And uh, fortunately, we don't get to swim as many outdoor meets as, as we have in the past. But maybe we'll see with Corona, we'll get back to it and everything. So um, again, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't, uh, you should have gotten an email from Todd and from the Bullets. 
um, about reaching out to your uh, our governor's office about getting pools open. The uh, a lot of the science coming out of the CDC is that uh, the, this virus cannot be passed through. That there's no evidence that you can. Uh, uh, pass Corona through water, so we're pretty excited that this is a, a good way of time for us to get back in the water and hopefully we'll be getting back in the water early June and get you kids back out there and getting in shape and start building our endurance and building our speed back up and things like taking our time with that. So, you know, if you haven't sent uh, your letters and emails to the governor and the, and the lieutenant governor and your senator and congressman, state senator congressman, we hope that you'll do that. There's also some national efforts going on to get us back in the water. So fingers crossed we're going to be able to get everybody back in the water. I know all of our coaches are excited to get back on deck. Uh, we have a cleaning party at one of our pools uh, next week to get everything ready to go. So if we can open up, then we'll be ready for it. And uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, again, um, kudos, as I always say, to our coaching staff for all the amazing content they've been putting out. And thank you for sticking with us. It's been a slog and it's been a challenge. And, and frustrating at times for all of us that we can't get back in the water. But uh, I think there's, a, I think we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, hopefully we'll get some positive news from our governor in the next day or two, and uh, and uh, we'll all be able to start celebrating and get back in the water, and you know maintain our social distancing, but you know at least getting out and getting around people again. So that's the hope. So anyway, I'm Bill Shaws. This is Bullets Academy from the Academy Bullets. And uh, we'll have another race. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I have a couple of ideas for next week. I know I promised, uh, I, I told you I was hoping to get a guest this week, and it didn't pan out. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean we won't be able to get this guest at some time in the future. And maybe next week would be an interesting time to do it, too. So, because um, this, this guest of ours certainly knows, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, if you will. And so... We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, you guys stay safe, everybody, and we hope to see you in the pool soon, soon, soon. All right? Have a great day.